Hello and welcome to my craft room. I'm ready to do a bit more experimenting with some um, lino cutting um, using the supplies in my artful box so I thought I would just record this so you can see how I get on. Um, I wanted this is the one that I printed the other day that I want to make up into a Valentine's card um, so I might finish that off in a minute. Um, I want to experiment with using some different inks with these uh, lino prints. So I found a lovely kind of lime green that I want to try and add into the background part but not the not the fruit. So I'm, I'm going to try that. Um, so here's the here's, here's the um, what's it called? <laughs> stamp block the block that I cut the other day um, and the little mini one that I kind of use as a stamp to add the heart in the middle I'm not going to be using them today because I've got a couple other prints to practice on I'm going to leave this one to one side because that's the that was my best print I want to use for the card um, I'm going to go to the desk so I can show you properly what I've got here um, so this was the illustration that I did for the red shoes the other day. Um, it's supposed to look like the, the shoes are dancing along and the, the poor girl is trying to hold back but being dragged along by the shoes and she's going through a dark forest because she just kept, the, the story says that she just kept dancing until she died. She could, just couldn't stop because the shoes were cursed. It's a very dark story. Um, so I made a tracing from my drawing, transferred it to one of the lino pieces like this and I've cut this one out. This is to print the black so I want it all a bit like with that heart one, I want it all black and white with just the shoes in red. Um, and I have started, I haven't seen anywhere this as a tip but it's really working for me and I can't see any reason not to do it. Um, I've started using this well, in this case, I've got this archival waterproof red ink. It's just the first one I grabbed, really, to be honest. Um, I just sort of rub that over the surface so it gives me some idea before I actually do a print of any obvious bits that I've kind of missed or want to cut a bit more away. And in this case, once I'd inked over, I then freehand cut in the little smaller branches that you can see there. Just And it was easier to see where I was going without drawing it out first. So... Um, so and then, and then I, I transferred the same image and I was going to use this one just to do the shoes and then I thought this is daft using this huge piece just to do those little shoes and I will end up with kind of red bits everywhere which I don't think I want, I, I want it clean black and white and whereas with, with, the, um, with this one I was able to just cut out that heart shape and place it exactly like a stamp I don't think I can do that with the shoes so rather than waste this and or try and sort of create a framework so that I can um, over, sta over stamp it, over print it accurately, what I'm going to do is use this for something else and I'm going to print this in the black and white, which is the black, and then I'm going to use this acrylic ink in this gorgeous cherry red colour and just a brush and just paint in the, the bit that I've left so you can see that I've I've carved out the shoes so they won't print and I just get a nice clear red or well, there'll be some black flecks in it but again I, I like that so um, that's that and put that to one side I'm gonna need my rollers this is the one that came in the kit for applying the ink and then I've got my handy old brayer for doing the sort of burnishing afterwards I treated myself to another one of those to, to a proper ink in tray I wasn't getting on with just using the acetate um, if you've seen my previous video you'll see it just kept sticking and coming up because this ink is really sticky so I treated myself to this it cost me about seven quid from, um, from work um, and I also treat myself to some gold ink so I do want an excuse to use that it might be that I want to add some touches of gold or white to the to the trees I should have carved some shading in but I, I kind of forgot so this might become a really mixed media piece where um, <laughs> where I go in with some um, pens or something and add the bits I wish I'd printed, I don't know. 
So what else am I going to need? For this one, which I want to turn into a Valentine's card, I want to try adding some of this lovely lime green pigment ink just to the background, leaving out the leaves and the um, fruit. So I want one of, this was my best print. I want the other ones that I made, which I've now lost, to just uh, practice on. And I also printed one off on a duff bit of paper just to, so I could use it as a mask. So I need to find those. And then I'm gonna be applying that with a brush using, using um, a hand cut mask. So that's kind of my plan. There's a couple of different things and it's really combining the lino printing with um, some other types of ink. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Let's have some sheets of paper ready. Lovely quality paper this. Let's have, a, let's have three. And I need to find those extra prints. Right, I found the other prints, so let's see if I can remember how this goes. <laughs> Here we go. So the idea is that you don't need too much of this. One of the um, people I was watching on YouTube said about twice as much as you would use a toothpaste. <laughs> That's probably more than twice what I'd use for toothpaste. But and uh, she was also saying there's no point in oh wrong thing there's no point in inking up more than a square created by the width of your roller. very sticky this ink. You feel like it's going to be the same as acrylic paint or something but yeah see I think I've probably and um, some people say that it once it sort of feels really sticky then it's kind of ready to go. This is so much nicer to use than that stupid bit of acetate. I guess you know obviously they've got to keep within a budget for the box and this would have thrown it over but it's well worth having okay so I'm gonna go for this now <laughs> I don't think that's ever gonna stop being a thrill Interesting that some bits that got picked up by that red ink pad aren't getting picked up by this. I think that this is going to annoy me. So I will probably end up having to take a bit of that off. Okay, I, I think I'm going to go for this. So I'm going to plop this on and once it's on I don't want to move. move the, I don't want to smudge it around. Once you sort of press the paper on it seems to, because the ink is so sticky, it seems to pretty well stay put, it doesn't move too easily. Um, I think a lot of people were using the same roller, which you could, that you've used to ink up with, but I just think I get messy enough as it is. I think a cleaner, <laughs> clean roller was a better idea for me. Also it's a bit of a waste of the ink that I could get another print from. That's not doing it yet. Right. Now the other thing was to use a spoon to burnish everything with. It's amazing how much pressure you have to use. And I must get around to trying my die cutting machine because if I can work out the right sandwich of cutting of cutting plates, I reckon that would do this job for me and, and those die cut machines do put an immense amount of pressure on more than I could probably ever do with this. All the tutorials I watched there were some differences in technique and things but everybody without fail said the more time you spend doing this the better impression you will get. Okay I'm gonna go for it. Pretty good. Not bad is it? So there's a couple of things I want to change there though. Um, yeah, a couple of things I can't change like, and this is the sort of thing I, I will learn with experience. I didn't really want to end up with a white 
line outlining the leg like that but I guess it's okay actually and I've ended up with a strange line down there I don't think I can do much about that now so I'm just gonna not worry about it are there any obvious bits I want to take out I was worried about this bit but I seem to have successfully wiped most of it off so that's okay but I think I will carve it away now before I do another print I tried to um, make my cuts down here go in the direction of the the way the grass would grow um, I've carved out the trees almost too well because there's there's none of the little dashed lines left and looking at it now I wish I'd have deliberately left it so that there was more lining maybe I will still cut that other that other plate and see if I can really improve on it from this you know but I think that's okay I'm, I'm quite happy with that it's crooked on the paper so if I wanted it straight on the paper I'd have I'm gonna have to learn how to make like a masking tape double frame or something so that I know where I am yeah I'm okay with that actually I think there's nothing on there that I want except for this little bit here there's nothing that I want different that I can actually do anything about now yeah I might need to carve the whole thing I've also ended up with um, the the large tree trunk here where this white piece is she's in front of the large tree trunk in her white night dress is what I'm imagining it is um, so there's not enough contrast between you know I should have I should have had a I should have had more black in there so yeah maybe I will as I've traced that one out I will carve this again and try and improve on it but overall I really can't like the look of it I might just do I might just carve that other piece that little piece out and try it again in there I found I used this sort of not the smallest V but not you know one of the smaller V's more than anything else that and the smallest V so I'm just going to take a couple of scoops out and it is like it's definitely more scooping scooping up like that apparently there is another kind of um, lino where it kind of snaps but this it's more you have to scoop it off otherwise if you don't do that you end up gouging in too far so that's that um yeah i did buy a piece sent half my wages at work again so um yeah i bought a piece of this which is what i think of more as like actual lino like we would have had on our floors except it would have had a nice pattern <laughs> smells so i think it's linseed that it smells of isn't it so this is this is absolutely huge and very thick and it's, it's going to be quite different carbon this but i think this might be the stuff that snaps i don't know so I'll have an experiment with that quite soon, hopefully. I, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this process. I can, I can see I will become quite addicted to it. It's just so satisfying. Every part of it. I love, the, I love even the drawing, sitting there doing a drawing and um, knowing you're going to print it out. Uh, and... Um, carving process it's it takes a long time but it's very um, therapeutic just wondering if I could pick up some more of that grain in there yeah, I don't think I can right Let's go for it. Uh, a little bit, uh, no, not such a good print there. Um, did manage to get some of the tree grain in there. Um, so yeah, I, I think the more I think about it, the more I think what a good idea it would be to carve this again. It seems a little bit wasteful to carve the same thing again, but I am learning. Um, and then I can make a point of making sure I've got some darkness behind the, the dress there 
so I've got some contrast. Um, I can deliberately leave some lines in the trees. I could also make sure that I leave, I want to imagine the, the moonlight is coming from here, so I, I should have left some lines here to, to indicate the, the darker side of the trees. And I, I need to not leave that white line there. I need to find a different way of doing that. So with this as a guide, I'm going to recarve that, that uh, block and see if I can make it any better. <laughs> it actually looks better on the block than it does on the paper to me. Put that to one side. I found it took a lot longer than I thought to dry. It stayed sticky for quite a while. And what surprised me was the kind of texture it leaves on the, on the page as well. Right, I must say that it's a very easy clean up that ink just falls off in cold water. <laughs> I didn't clean this off, I'm not going to bother. Um, I think I will only ever print that in in black and I want to leave that black on it so I can really see what I'm doing when I come to re-carve it. So I might as well carry on and paint the red in just to see what that looks like. And I'm just using these um, PH Martins Bombay inks. I'm just going to use it straight out the bottle. Whoops, <laughs> I've got it all up the thing. Oh, I love that red. It's a real cherry red. I quite like the idea of using the lino cutting to print the, the, the basic image, but then add into it in different media. Uh, somewhere else I've gone wrong. Aha, yes. It's a bit like one of those spot the difference pictures. You keep seeing things. I haven't taken out. I haven't there. It should have been a white, black and white stripe all the way down. And there, I've not, I've not done it properly. I've missed the stripe. Yeah. So this can definitely be improved on. And I think it would be a good learning exercise for me to recarve it and see how much I can improve on the original. I might just leave a little light dot there. So there we go, that's that bit. And I'm just thinking I could just use micron pens just to add detail and maybe cheat and put some of the <laughs> it's not really cheating, it's just working on my working on my piece. I just need Perhaps here. I could also use a white pen to take out the bits that I should have. So that's actually quite a nice way of working out what I want to change. Yeah, I think that's improved it already. Just um, so, yeah, it's just making some notes to myself really that um, shading, shading and texture in the trees. Um, stocking, that's, that's the stripes there I need to look at. Um, the leg outline. I want it to be dark behind the figure, which should have been obvious. It's weird how difficult it is to think in negative, you think it's going to be easy, it's not. So, armed with this and this, so I can see what I've got to change, I'm going to recarve. I'm going to recarve that and, uh, and make it better. But I'm, for a first um, go at it, I'm really happy with that. It's got the sort of uh, 
atmosphere I was after. I might also try adding some um, gold and I guess I could do that. Uh, yeah, I might just try some gold pen down there just to see what that would look like as if it were just glints of gold where the moonlight might be catching it because I've got that gold printing ink to use. Okay, so that is that one. I'm filthy. Um, so now moving on to this one. I need to remember which is. So these were my not so brilliant prints. Let's try this one first. Um, so what I'm going to do is use this to make a mask for myself. So that I can just use that green pigment ink to colour the background in. Uh, that lovely lime green. I don't mind if it's slightly offset because I quite like that look. I think it makes it look hand printed because if it was going to look professional, I might as well just go and buy it from someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> this is for a Valentine's card for my husband, so I know he will appreciate the work that's gone into it. I mean, it's a little bit wonky, he won't mind. Bit of what in the paper crafting world we, we call fussy cutting or I call cussy fighting because it can get a bit cussy but I'm actually quite a fan of a bit of fussy cutting I don't mind it I'm sure somewhere I've got some masking paper I could have printed this on which would have made it a bit easier you always get when you use a paper mask like this you always get a little bit of a kind of shadow around it or like a negative shadow around it because of the thickness of the paper I should probably cut this slightly smaller than the outline in fact. Let's do that a little bit. Okay, I'm going to use um, this blending brush. You can buy these as makeup brushes. It's usually a bit cheaper than, to buy them that way than as a crafting set for some reason. But they're lovely. They're really soft and very, but very dense bristles so you get a nice blended effect with them. Right, so this is just my, my duff one so Okay, I'm going to start. Oh, I should have masked off. Hang on. So I want to also mask off the background. So I've got this purple tape, which is very low tack. And hopefully won't tear my paper. I could just um, stick it on my clothes a couple of times. See if I could be bothered. Just to take the tack off even more. But am I going to bother? No. Of course I'm not. Am I going to regret it? Maybe. I'm going to start with the leaves, get them out of the way first. Oh, it's not such a pretty green as I was hoping for. Well, let's come in and just go for the effect. I might have to go and pick a different colour because that's a bit me. Oh, it's doing what I wanted to do. I just want it bright. Let's go for this one. I've got a distress ink now. This is Twisted Citron. I'm not getting that lovely green. I think that other one's just ruined it now. Okay, for the next one I will use just this green. Let's just take it off and see how it looks. Oh, it is doing the thing I wanted it to do actually, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Let's see how this comes off. I can use that again I think. But yeah, that's getting there. I just want a much more vivid green. So I'm going to go in for the next one. Right, I think that looks a bit more like I wanted. Let's have a look. Oh yes, and see this is what I mean where it's a bit offset, but there we're on the leaves, but I don't mind that at all. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. The other thing I wanted to do, I may as well practice first on this more duff one. As so I was thinking about writing the quote around here. I'm going to initial it as well. I don't like that. I think it needs to be thicker. See, so this is why I never sign my work. I always just take the look of it. Okay, so what I was thinking about was writing the quote from the Edward Lear poem. I just 
just writing it in spiky writing around here. You can hear the texture of the ink as I'm writing over it. So I do. Th I think that quite adds to it, but I'm going to make it more scribbly and possibly try with a thicker pen. I think I quite like the look of that, just for a bit of extra. So I've just written, they dined on mince and slices of quince, which they ate with a runcible spoon, because this was inspired by quince. So yeah, I think um, having just practiced that a little bit, I'm going to write that around there just for a bit of something extra. Okay, so I have come back and um, just finished adding the colour to this one. It does it, it does look a bit more vibrant in real life than it does um, on the camera, so I'm quite happy with that now. It does pretty much look... Well, even that doesn't look that vibrant on the camera. Strange. But it's a really... Um, well, it's called Twisted Citron, so... Um, is it sharp on that? Yeah, it's a bit more like it looks on there. So um, I've added the background. This was my best print, so this is one I'm going to use for my finished card. And I've experimented with some different ways of mounting it. So this one, um, I added a little... I've double matted it. First on black glittery card, which hopefully you can pick up there. And then onto another layer of white card. Um, so then I can just um, either choose to mount that as a little picture to go in my room or I can make it into another card. And then this one I haven't quite decided so I've got, I've got a few, I've got a couple of weeks yet till this needs to be ready. I've tried out this idea of using a, a black and white striped masking tape to give me a little fun border which I, I really like actually. I think this is going to be the winner but then I've got to decide will I just have another white around it um, or I could layer it again with black. I also experimented with layering it on some really bright green to, to really bring out that green which I quite like too. Um, I thought about the red but I haven't actually got any red card and I, I, I tried putting a little bit of red ribbon up next to it just to see if it was um, worth perhaps inking some red if, if it would look really good but I, I actually didn't like it I think it needs to be the green or the black and white. At the moment that combination is top favourite. Bearing in mind who it's going to be for as well and what I know he'd probably like. So that is it, that's um, me done for today with my um, liner printing. I'm really enjoying it. I, I think it's going to be something I will, I will carry on with. Um, I do quite a lot of and so for, for my first Artful Box it's been a huge success because it's really got me um, going on something I never really tried before so, so that's really good. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, uh, watching that slightly chaotic process. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining me and I will see you again really soon. Bye!